All right, guys, what is up, and welcome back to the channel. As you can see behind me, we got some more truck content coming today, and this is going to be especially for the 04 to 08 F 150s. Uh, this is going to be a video of or for people that are looking to buy an 04 to 08 F-150 and what they should look into before they buy it. So guys, I know I've had plenty of people message me, uh, leave it in the comments and stuff, asking about these trucks and whether they're good trucks. And guys, we're gonna dive right into it today and let you know what you need to look at before you bring one of these bad boys home. Let's get into it. All right guys, so we've got a 2007 F-150 here. Like I said earlier, guys, got 178,000 miles on it. Definitely a sharp rig if you ask me. Anyway, if you guys want to see more of that, like I said, check out the channel. But guys, we're going to go ahead and jump into it. Uh, this truck has been repainted. And as you can see, it looks great. But guys, we're going to talk about why I went ahead and did the full repaint. Um, this truck was black when I got it. No issues. Uh, paint wasn't really terrible. But it has to, the issue stems from this uh, third brake light. So a lot of people put the aftermarket brake lights in or the uh, original seals on the brake lights tend to go bad. And these trucks will leak. So guys, if you're looking at one of these trucks, definitely be sure to check out your cab corners right here and also just of course double check the rockers uh tend to get a little they, basically what happens is the water will run down and you basically you get um uh, settling right here and you kind of get rust from basically underneath the paint out or inside out i guess you could say but guys that's uh, definitely a big thing i would check on not really a huge deal i mean it is body work that you got to do if you want a really nice looking vehicle uh, i went ahead and did so pretty much this panel all the way down uh basically the cab corner and rockers all the way down the truck have been done uh, on both sides for this vehicle. Uh, I really only had one side that was really bad, but went ahead and replaced both of them just to go ahead and uh, you know get to it. But guys, let's go ahead and jump into something else. All right, guys, so look, we're gonna talk about these meaty boys. These are 35s, big boys. But guys, the reason why you put big tires on there is so you can uh, still put it in four-wheel drive and you know get out of some stuff. And we're gonna talk about, I'm gonna try and get the camera in here, guys. So basically, you're looking at your axle right there. And there is a four wheel drive actuator on the end of these axles. And underneath the hood, on the right side of these trucks, if you go look, uh, actually, let me pop the hood, guys. I'll be right back. All right, guys, look at that. We got our, got our hood popped here. So we're gonna go ahead and jump up under the hood of this bad boy. And right there, as you can see, I've got a little cover over mine. Most people need a cover, because what happens is the runoff off this wiper cowl actually runs into your solenoid if it doesn't have a cover, and it gets water in your lines, and you kind of run into an issue. But guys, let's go ahead and back out here. So we're gonna look at something. If we get down real low, we can see the axle there. So basically, if you jack one side of the truck up, you don't have to, uh, you can actually test your four wheel drive without actually having to engage it. So if you jack one side of the truck up and spin your tire with the truck off, turn the truck off, spin the tire, and if the axle spins, then your four wheel, dr four -wheel drive actuator is engaging and en engaging properly. So if you, uh, if you want, want to know real quick if a truck you're buying, uh, if a four wheel drive works, and you can't really go test it out, I mean, guys, just uh, see if you can borrow a jack or bring a jack with you. Jack up one side of it and double check up. Or jack up both sides, really, to double check. Because uh, those actuators, they're not easy, not really easy to change, and they're kind of expensive. So that's one thing to definitely check on. But guys, let's go ahead and jump into the next one. All right, guys. So let's hop in this bad boy. We're going to talk about something real quick. So we're going to go ahead and turn a key on like that. We're going to put our truck right here in neutral. And guys, we're going to pop her in the four low. And guys, as you can see, it's going to take a second. There we go. We've engaged. Y'all probably heard it click and four low. But guys, I want to show you something, uh, the difference of four low. So go ahead and disengage it. There we go. Unclick. Put her in park. And see, so if you're, or actually we'll put her in drive. So if you're just going and you click that in, you're actually only ever get, if it even comes up. So a lot of people assume that the four low on these trucks may not work. So as you can see, the switch is on and it's in drive. Uh, but the four low actually, for a neutral here, there you go. So a lot of people may assume that the four low on these trucks doesn't work, um, but you just kind of have to, you can't, it's not an on the fly switch. Um, now you can switch it four high on the fly, so we'll let that light go back out. If it's ever going to, I guess. Oh, sorry, you gotta put her driver back in neutral. Let it roll back a little bit. So now the four high, if we put her in drive again and we go to four high, it will automatically engage and come on. So it's a little bit different. That's definitely a tip to know. If you're looking at buying one of these trucks and you think that the four wheel drive does or doesn't work, uh, just double check that, put it in neutral and see if that uh, helps your four low engagement. I know a lot of people, they'll sit there for a minute or two and they won't engage and they'll assume that the four low doesn't work. But in turn, just gotta drop her in neutral. That may be a common thing that more people know, but it's just uh, for some new people with these trucks, it took me a second to figure it out. 
But guys, uh, let's see if we can get something else figured out. All right, guys, look at that. We're here in the engine bay. Y'all knew. Y'all knew it was coming. Anybody that has one of these or wants one of these knows it's coming. We got to talk about it. It's a, a big, big elephant in the room. So the 5.4 is uh, arguably behind the 6.0. Oh, I'm sorry, did I offend somebody? Uh, arguably one of the least reliable engines, to say. Um, maybe maybe behind the 6.4, who's to say? Um, but they're not necessarily the most reliable to most people. However, I've had good luck with mine. And uh, my brother's had good luck with his. My dad's got an Expedition, it's got a 5.4 in it. Uh, list goes on and on. We've had multiple 5.4s make it over 100,000 miles. And guys, uh, I think if you go ahead and click on video is about to pop up right here. You'll see why we have those 5.4s that go further than 100,000 miles. Uh, if you follow that routine, I guess you could say, that uh, I've gotten that video, it definitely helps out. Uh, promotes longer life in these engines. Guys, let's go ahead and talk about this. Let's, let's walk over here and get this engine in the back here. So basically, guys, we're going to be wanting to listen for sounds. Big sounds. Big sound guy. Uh, you want to be listening for taps, rattles, uh, anything that sounds like an ordinary. I guess you say it kind of sounds uh, self-explanatory, but you're really listening for like a small, like a tick, something like that. It's not going to be that notable or that audible. Sorry guys, mosquitoes are terrible here. Um, it's not going to be that notable or audible, but it's just going to be a slight uh, tick or slight tap. That's going to be the timing chain. Uh, these tensioners tend to fail on these engines and will tap. Uh, it can cause a catastrophic failure. It's not a major deal, uh, dare I say. Uh, it, can, it can, don't get me wrong guys, it can definitely cause catastrophic failure in the motor. But it is not a uh, immediate danger if you just start hearing it. I would definitely, definitely go ahead and plan to get that changed out if you have those symptoms. I'll also look for the rattle on startup, stuff like that. And guys, I gotta talk about it. This thing's got a real bad problem with plugs. But now if your truck has had the plugs changed and had the updated truck or updated plugs put in the truck, then you're fine. Uh, realistically, I haven't broke one. Uh, the updated plugs are I've changed the truck. I've changed the plugs in this truck three times since I've had it. Uh, the first time, I uh, had the original plugs in. I had to use the Lyle extractor tool. And guys, so you don't have to pull the head if it gets stuck in the head, which is great. Basically, it's a tool that threads in the what's left of the plug that's in the motor and pulls it out. I don't necessarily think it's great because it crushes the porcelain. I just feel like one's going to fall on top of the piston and cause some problems, but who's to say? Who's to say? They say it goes out the exhaust, exhaust valve. I'm not worried about it. But, if you uh, are looking at a truck with 100,000 miles, 150,000 miles, guys, I, I would ask when the plugs were changed. If they don't know, I, that might be uh, it's definitely a big shot bill if you don't do it yourself. And a big pain in the butt if you have to do it yourself. So I would definitely check into that. But, guys, yeah, hold on. We're not, got, we're not here to scare all these guys off. There are plenty of people that have these motors that uh, put the work into them, put the time into them. And some of them don't even need the work the time. I know plenty of them that's made it 300,000 miles with no major failures. Just taken care of, and yeah, I said it. Three hundred thousand miles out of a five point four. I rode one the other day. Crazy, crazy. But guys, these trucks can definitely last if you take care of them. Um, but yeah, I mean that same same goes with any vehicle. But there's plenty. Of, there, there's a couple features or a couple things that you guys should be looking out for if you're looking to buy one of these bad boys. But hey, if uh, anything else, you think of anything else, drop it in the comments. I may have to make another video. Who knows? I may miss something. But yeah, guys, uh, drop your experience with your five point four. I, lo I love seeing you guys uh, comment talking about how you have five point fours that have. So many miles on them and no problems. I mean, I think it's uh, I think these these trucks definitely get a bad rap for good reason. Don't get me wrong, they have failures, but uh, I think they get more of a bad rap than they necessarily deserve. But guys, I hope y'all enjoy. I'll catch y'all on the next one. Uh, stay tuned. More side by side stuff, some firearm stuff, more truck stuff. Yeah, catch y'all later.